Welcome and, and thank you for tuning in to Dexter Deep Cuts, the number one Dexter podcast out there. We are your hosts, Nimar Joe and Lizard Town. Dexter Deep Cuts is a podcast about two fans discussing and just casually talking about one of our favorite shows. We'll be discussing characters, plot points, and just anything that comes to mind about the show. I will warn that we are going to give away some spoilers, so if you're not up to date on the latest episode, do not listen. We will be publishing the new episode whenever we have a chance to. I know this one's kind of late. Really late. But, I would also like to mention that the discussion is not totally inclusive. We will love to have some comments, some feedback, and even other ideas. Maybe there's something that we missed. So, you can look at our blogger, Dexter D. Cut, or... Please email us at DexterDeepCuts at gmail.com. We are also on Podbean.com. That's P-O-D-B-E-A-N.com. Dexter Deep Cuts. Because I cannot figure out iTunes for the life of me. Anyways, we want to hear from you, your thoughts, and we will give you a shout out. Links are on the side, and if there's another show you'd like to discuss, tell us about it. So grab your favorite brew and enjoy. Alright, welcome back. <laughs> um, each time she says the grab, grab your favorite brew, she does this like uh, arm thing. It's like, like this little like getting into yeah, getting, getting into the sweet. spirit of it. Yeah. But um, we are on episode four. Uh, the episode title is Run, which is kind of like oh, Run. Dexter's gonna have to run. From whom? Notice I said whom. Technically. And whom. Yes. <laughs> um. Yeah, so, um. Where to start with? Run. Well, I say start with the beginning of the show where they do the recap. Because apparently they showed things that are important that are coming out. I mean, with the recap, you mean like previously on Dexter? Yeah. Well, they talked about what was previously on Dexter. But what do they focus on? The stuff that previously happened on Dexter. Oh, my <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, now, it showed that uh, they went to uh, Spelcher, Spelcher's... Speltzer. 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 The uh, bull man, the man who had the... Uh, it's the cult of Mithras. Cult of Mithras. They, um, they... Nerd that. They went to to his uh, mausoleum where he previously had had that uh, the little uh, earring of a prior kill there. But when they went back to, like, check for evidence or... But DNA, it was missing now. Oh yeah, and and they they um. When they're there, it, it's kind of like they were really looking. Like they did find his DNA in the mausoleum, but they didn't find any of his DNA um, at the crime scene of the maze where he killed that waitress. Now, it has been done before where Dexter would compromise a crime scene, like he did with Victor. In the first episode, like, he took the fingerprints. He does it all the time. Oh, yeah. So, is he consciously or subconsciously? Like, doing this? Yeah. No, he's, like, consciously doing it. Like, sabotaging? Like, he... He he didn't want... He he did find the DNA where he just, like, ignored it. No, you said he doesn't want the police to have it. He wants him to have it. So another reason why Dexter needs to be stopped. Well, here's another thing. He's under a lot of stress. Because he compromises. First of all, he wouldn't have touched. Well, first of all, he wouldn't have touched Victor if he was under a lot of duress from Deb, and the one person that means anything in his life. Well, we were kind of over that in the last episode. You know my uh, thoughts. For you people out there, check out the last episode where me and Blizzard Town talk about that in full detail. Uh, what I like about the show is that sometimes they have these breadcrumbs where they, they focus on this little thing for just like two seconds and you think, that's going to have something to do with it later. 
like for instance the bracelet with the GPS tracking because apparently that girl was a, a drug mule and then they focused on Lewis when um, bald henchman number one hey, first of all I'm going to talk about that bald henchman with the earpiece it's like I think he does a great job just telling the story in his silence with his eyes and facial expressions um, and I, I, I think well I think he does a lot of work and he's got like that earpiece like a CIA agent or special service like what you gotta have secret service would have and it's like he, he's he I swear to god I've probably seen him play a bodyguard another henchman secret service agent a prison guard a cop I was, <laughs> there's a bunch of actors like that I don't know I, <laughs> I, I will say that like what Baby. I'll talk a little bit more about him later when we get a little bit further through the episode. But, yeah, like, this dude is just, like, doing all the dirty work. He's just this pain to look in his eye. He doesn't say anything. I don't even think he gets... I don't even think he gets credit. I'm pretty sure he is credited. Bodyguard number one? Henchman? I think he has a name. I'm pretty... I don't know. We don't know. I think the uh, Punisher said it once or twice. I don't know. Um, but back to the breadcrumbs thing. Um, so you had like the bracelet. Kind of thought, well, why did they focus on it? Is it like GPS or something? Okay, there was. Second of all, Lewis is on Dexter's boat because Dexter just owned him <laughs> as far as his job and his girlfriend. He was at the wrong place at the wrong time. Good now, shot. another breadcrumb, the whole focus on the blood dripping onto the boat. Oh, yeah, that's definitely going to bring up, maybe not per se the next episode, but the episode that after that has the tops next two episodes. Okay, and then, which is like right there alone, that's like some serious, serious implications. Mm-hmm. And here's another breadcrumb. Remember when Dexter first broke into the mausoleum, he found the earring to the picture, he was trying to send it to Deb? And he felt like there's no service. And, you know, he goes and runs after Deb because she was watching Spelter at his house. And now, like, Masuka was like, oh, there's no service. It's like, why are they making such a big deal about the no service? Or am I just completely wrong about this breadcrumb? I think I am. You, you never know. I mean, stuff like that. Like, I mean, I don't know how that would affect anything. Because it seems like the whole... Spelter storylines is done and gone with. Uh, well, at the beginning of this episode where we're at, we don't know this yet. So we're, yeah. we're, we're going chronologically. But I'm like 99% sure of anyone listening. Well, we've seen it by now. Okay. Let's move on to the next part. Um, so I heard my brother watch this. He doesn't watch the show. So. <laughs> no, why not? It is a really good show. It's fantastic. It's one of the best shows on the TV currently. But yeah, it's it's different. It's not the usual... I guess it's pretty obvious okay. since we're making a podcast about the show that we would have strong feelings about it being one of the best shows on and, and like, honestly, we haven't been watching it for six years. Um, we just got into it like a year ago. Because... Yes. I don't normally watch TV. But I heard a lot of people talking about it on Facebook. So after years. after years of it, I'm like, whatever. And so I brought up the first episode and then I told you about it. And so we sat down and we just couldn't get enough. There's still some of the first season I have yet to see. She watched a lot of it without me. All right, I, I do have a bad habit of like when I'm, I get into a show. She has a very bad habit of that. I will have a marathon like... I, I'm one of those people, I can actually sit through the entirety of the director's cut of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Like, I have no problem with that. As long as I get to pause it and do a couple things, but then come back to it, I can I can do that. So, I'm able to sit down and do a whole series marathon. Like, most recently was Hell on Wheels, which I'll bring up later. I don't know if anybody else has seen it. But, let's get back to Dexter. Let's get back to, to the main part. Deb's dream. Yeah, she has a dream 
where she's taking a taking a bath and um, and the uh, the water turns into blood, which happens a lot. You know, you, you see <laughs> a lot. That. Yeah, that's like that's just like every Thursday for me. But, uh, <laughs> you know, within cinema, what abs ain't nothing. But but then Dexter walks in in this dream. And he's dressed in like a suit. And then he says, Deb, will you be mine? Was that referring to back to the end of last season when there was that whole theory that Deb was kind of into Dexter in an inappropriate way? I- she started to get uh, Dexter fever. <laughs> now, is it coming back? Because there, there's another moment during this episode that I felt it was... A little they weird and such Yeah. The, I, they were about to make out of well, it. Well, we'll get to that yeah. for a second because I was like, please don't let this be weird. Please don't let this be weird. But anyways, um, so there's that dream though, but it's also, she has, I think she has those Freudian feelings, which you're very uncomfortable to like even look at. It's like, oh. Well, you have to keep in mind. But. That is her adopted brother. I don't actually. It doesn't it, matter. It, it doesn't matter. He's. He's her brother, and she's his sister, and that's all he sees. At least, I think Dexter has the ability not to question. So, this is okay. No, it's not because of all the emotional, psychological consequences that are involved with something like that. Do you know Whitney Houston's uh, daughter is marrying her, her adopted brother? And that's all kinds of weird freakiness? God. Considering the fact that they're the children of Whitney Houston? All right, well, here we go. The thing is, though, in this episode, it's not the first incestuous kind of, like, illusion. I mean, that one's illusion, but the other one was just, like, straight on. But I'll get there in a second. Do you think, like, because, like, in the past episodes and the past seasons, we've always thought that Deb kind of acted naive. Like, how could she not figure these things out? Like, it's... It's her brother. Oh, no, 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 she's... Okay. Um Weirdo. <laughs> brother she wants to get it on with. Okay, gross. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. But in the past it's like there's been this he's left so much evidence to something's not right, something's wrong, and she just sort of turns a blind eye and so now she's confronted fully and now she's got this dream about the bathtub full of blood, the baby crying, and then Dexter coming in and like proposing. And it's like everything came to her. I think it's both Freudian and her was rational. Was there a baby crying? Yeah, because Harrison, when uh, Rita was killed in the bathtub, he found Harrison crying on the floor in the blood. But that was supposed to like mimic him. As no, a Harrison was actually there. No, but that's a, that, that's. Well, yeah, he he that, freaked out to, because like, he had a flashback from when he was a child. In his mother's blood. Yeah, but I'm saying that. But like, I don't remember in Deb's stream of a baby crying. The sounds in the background, you hear the baby crying. Maybe I just. Didn't well, I, I heard it. So she basically put it all together. It finally came together. Well, like she finally wanted to acknowledge it, or um, had the gall to acknowledge that Rita's death seemed weird. Well, I mean. Oh yeah, and, and you know that's Rita's death was just straight up Dexter's fault. There's no way around it. We'll get there in a second. Well, I, I know don't... technically Trinity killed him, but it was it's because of Dexter. She would still be alive if Dexter wasn't doing what he does. Proving my point once again why Dexter's really not that great of a person. I think. Yeah, because, like, with Trinity, he was trying to be a mentee and having Trinity, a.k.a. John Lithgow, be his mentor. You know, about, like, having a normal sort of appearance of life and then having a family, and Dexter was already kind of, like, really anxious about having a wife and having a kid and adopted kids. Oh, by the way... Didn't he promise to be like those kids' father, be in their lives and stuff like that? What happened to Rita's daughter and her, her son? In Orlando. I mean, Orlando. Yeah, does he even visit them? Does he? 
Uh, that's that's what I'm saying. Cause see, it, it's Dexter cannot be a father. Uh, it's like he's trying to convince himself that he is that attached, but he's not. But then again, Harrison is his blood. Yeah, but the thing is that Harrison's in in danger pretty much every day of his life. Harrison doesn't know it. Well, Dexter also thinks that Harrison's been affected by the fact that even as you know, as a small baby, he saw his mother get killed. But in the someone can and like easily in come blood. in and like kill Harrison or kidnap him. All right. Well, no, that's true. Because of Dexter's habits. What do you think of uh, Quinn? Detective Quinn. I have no opinion. No opinion. Just I mean, <laughs> like. Uh, well, I know that you have a long, a bit of a stronger opinion on. Uh, an idiot. He 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 hasn't really. Ah, he's just kind of just Quinn. Since like his like, since like last season, he's just been kind of. There, now this. he looks like totally emaciated, right? Like he's got some sort of eating disorder. <laughs> Do you think everyone? No, I don't. No, I don't. He just looks like super, super skinny this season. It's kind of weird looking. Um, but on the other hand, it's like that goon that works at the the was it the Foxy? The Fox Trot. Yeah, fox or trot something. Trot I don't know. Something. At the strip club. The strip club. He's like, yeah, it'll be like old times. All these money in your trunk and blow and all these things. It'll just be like old times. But he's always been been, been kind of like, not like super straight, man. He's always been like, you know, the, the, the crazier side of life. Well, it's true. Case in point, he knows Dexter's secret, but he acts like he ain't no thing. He doesn't know for sure. No, he does know. Dexter saved his, his ass. And then he was worried that he was going to take the fall for the death, and then he found out, like, oh, Dexter did this, and so this just kind of been mutual, and that was when Quinn was uh, dating his sister. Oh, okay. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. yeah, like, Dexter totally saved his ass, and so he's like, yeah, I'm cool. <laughs> I'm cool. I know your secret. I'm cool. But... He's like falling in love with a stripper. He even tells him, well, my bosses are dangerous. My bosses wanted me to get close to you. You know, I, I can't really well, do a Russian accent, uh, but you know what I mean. She can't either. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I was only kidding. Why are you so apologetic? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the rare chance that that actress listens like, oh, he hurt my feelings. Oh, he wanna, hurt my feelings. I want to kill myself now. Okay, uh, great. Wow, that's just disturbing. <laughs> you would think that. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, no, um, shoot, we got, uh, the stripper and, uh, Quinn. Yeah, it's kind of dangerous, but it fits the, the, the Quinn character. And yeah, he's an know, idiot. Yeah, that's that's just his character. Yeah. All right, well, let's go back to Deb and her having this dream, and afterwards she's like, "How can you love me and love killing?" It's like, well, it's not inclusive. I don't want to kill you. <laughs> you know? It's like yeah. I kind of get that, like Dexter's argument, but I do see him like trying to be manipulative because the one person he actually cares about ever is Deb. And, uh, you know, she mentions about getting Harrison, taking him out of the way, out of the situation. He needs to be out of that situation. If well, Dexter was a good parent, he would, A, stop killing, or B, put Harrison up to adoption. adoption. I think he, I think he's gonna, I think he's actually kind of wanting a similar situation to pass on a legacy. Well, it seems like... Yeah, it seems like he's, uh... I think he's hoping his son would be the only person that understands him. Speaking of which, what happened to Lumen? Now it's, uh, another blonde, Hannah McKay. Yep, it, uh, it's... Yeah, it's kind of Dexter's baby type. Well, like, Lumen... He saved Lumen, and... She knew who he was, and he went and killed her, and he taught her how to kill and shit. 
I would think that she would have come back, but now it's like, no, this other girl. Uh, she's famous. Did you I guess she's got other movie deals, yeah. like uh, mm. War Legacy, apparently. See, there you go. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, uh, this this could make an interesting love twist because there's something in that in the trailer for the next episode that gets me thinking: Does she actually kill people? And she's been kind of hiding it. I think I think Randall uh, um, protected her. I think. Well, remember, like she comes in and she's talking to Dexter, revealing all this stuff. That it was kind of a thrill for her. And he's like looking for something to make him feel something, at all, anything at all, besides his sister giving him major anxiety and shit. So. And she owns like a nursery. What perfect place to hide bodies. Oh, yeah. Um. I mean, what if what if it wasn't Randall the whole time? But what if it was her? Could be, cause like I said, there seems to be something big in that uh, next episode. Um, that next episode looks explosive. I am so happy to see that there's there's so much that goes on. During that uh, preview, it's it's just looks like that. That's that's when the episode become. I mean, that's this is when the season really picks up. You know. Well, just, um, looks, I want to mention like when they get back to the the strip club, they put in a new detective, and it's like, who are you? What's your name? Ooh. When 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 did you come in? Yeah, the lady. She's, there's a new female. Oh. Tech. Yeah, like where the hell did she come from? She All of a sudden she's got like these a, lines. Uh, also, she's got these lines. There's no name. Yeah, but the thing is that they made it seem like she's already integrated into the, into the group, and it's like, well, wait a minute. Who, we don't even have an introduction to you. Who are you? Well, you have to keep in mind. I'm not the only one who's a detective. It's like, the, who the fuck are you? I'm sorry. I'm using gross not, language. Like, I'm sorry. I mean, it's not like it's just eight people in the entire, you know. But it's a show. Well, but because it's a show, they have to keep it inclusive to what eight people. It, what not if even it, five people. What if it was like some fan who won a contest to walk on with like one line? See, you, know? you don't even know that. I don't know, but I'm just saying that I didn't look. Too much into that that detective. Well, I, I I just looked at her. and I'm like, who are you? <laughs> Where did you come from? I just thought that she was just. Uh... All right. So what is with Isaac's uh, hard on with Victor? Well, I I feel well, kind yeah. of bad. I, well, I feel now kind of bad. Right? I wrote that down long like the beginning of the episode. And it's like, what is up with Vic, uh, like Isaac's hard on for Victor? Now we know it's literal. Um. That's that was his partner. They were in love, and now the Punisher is revenging uh, Victor's death. Yeah, because I thought it was. I mean, I kind of. That's what he does. Has some suspicions. Like, what Punisher. is he? His cousin, his 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 wife's brother. What does this guy mean to him? Oh, he's his lover. Okay, now I get it. After it's been revealed about you know with them having their little photoshopped picture sitting on the island of Cyprus in Greece and it's like uh, I mean how much oh by the way how much more <laughs> graphic you get it's like oh they're gay and they're visiting Greece <laughs> I mean, why did it have to be Greece why couldn't it be somewhere else I don't know stuff <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that there's something to it. Um, yeah, um, but I'm also thinking, since he knows who Dexter is now, Isaac knows who Dexter is. Isaac's the uh, Punisher, right? Mm-hmm. Serdikov. And it's not Russian Mafia, it's the Ukrainian Mafia. Which makes him kind of slightly less intimidating, I guess. Since they're still, like, cooking meals off of radiators over there. But I think when you actually go over there, everything is in black and white still. 
I, I don't. I think you lose all color in your vision. It's just everything's just black and white, <laughs> and everyone looks miserable. <laughs> Anyways, but I, th I think I, me I mentioned before that Isaac is gonna be Dexter's uh, white buffalo. Do you think that maybe he will turn him over to Deb, and that will be her like big fish? Uh, stop it. I mean, it's really tough to say where they're gonna go with it. Um, you know, it's just tough to say. I really don't. I really don't know. I'm for like that one. I'm just taking the uh, journey. I mean, uh, I'm still conflicted. Well, I'm still conflicted on the fact with Spelter that he he just got off. Um by not acknowledging his Miranda rights after a confession. Freddy Krueger had a similar situation happen to him. Lesson, do not acknowledge your Miranda rights when you're arrested. You have a chance. <laughs> Just a little tip. I will remember that. I will test that. But then again, this is Texas, so it doesn't matter. You get a speeding ticket, you're thrown in with like freaking killers and stuff. So... You get a speeding ticket. You ran a stop sign. Oh, man. Public enemy number one. But, um... Yeah, like, it, it just... I, I don't know. I, whether or not he subconsciously or consciously compromised the crime scene. Maybe it was just, like, such a habit. He didn't quite realize it. And then he did, so he would get off. Because if they actually did have the DNA at the crime scene, this guy wouldn't have gotten away. Yeah, I just said Dexter purposely did. There's, like, no way around it. It's just, that's what Dexter does. He's he, kind of iffy about it. Usually it's like there's a confession about that, but he didn't police, confess it. You know. Oh, and we saw one little glimmer of Matsuka. Yep, he's bringing it back. He said a pretty good joke. Kind of yeah. forgot what it was, but it was pretty I was funny. like, uh, what we have is a white Russian... On ice or something like On that. On ice, yeah. That's but so that's because this poor bartender, Alexander, had to take the fall for Victor. He was kind of forced to. It was like, yeah. if he didn't do it, yeah. the bald henchman was My only thing was going to do it. That if I was put, put into that situation, uh, like... Like, this is for reals. Because, okay, like, uh, Vic, uh, I mean, Alexander. the uh, Punisher Alexander. promised him uh, that he was going to pay pay his family to, like, live, to live a great life. But, honestly, if, like, the guy is also threatening to kill you if if you don't kill yourself, that means the guy's probably probably not going to give... Give or, you know what? Or, I okay, well, I actually... Or maybe he will. I actually wrote this down. I mean, I, I, I would have asked for proof of, of this financial but transaction. But the thing is... I would have saw it as leverage. It's like, so if I don't take the fall for this, you're screwed. But they're going to kill what? him. Yeah, they're, they're going to kill him anyway. But why not? But they also threatened to, like, kill his family. Then he died in vain. No matter what. At least if he died... He would have known the truth, and he wouldn't be so shiny and happy about them showing up at his freaking doorstep like he did something great. Like, he's just at home, probably watching TV, you know, maybe like watching Two and a Half Men or something, you know, going online, checking his email, you know, and, and then, then all of a sudden his boss shows up to the door with the main boss, and it's like, oh, I must have did something good, you know, like, I why are they visiting me? Good. Well, because... They're Ukrainian. And the thing is, though, I would have been like, I want to see the money right now. You do the money transfer. I will do this. I will kill myself if you they guarantee. They probably wouldn't do that. They're probably like, okay. I think like, they would. Or they'll be insulted because I didn't take him on his word. And then I've heard But they're going to make it look like a suicide. They did, they did make it look like no, a suicide. No, that's what I'm saying. That even if the guy didn't, you know... When they Actually, this, they they probably would have made it look like a suicide. They, said, they would have tried to. But only Dexter As Bautista, would have. No, noticed. no, it wasn't about it wasn't Dexter. It was Bautista. You gotta wrap it up soon. I think uh, I think uh, Bautista realized that the dude did pull a trigger, but was, he was forced to. 
Yeah, and if somebody else pulled the trigger, it would have been like a dead giveaway that this was like a setup and this is a, this is fake. Look, notice how he made him pull the trigger. He made him write the note. And it's like, I don't know. I, I would have asked for some more proof. I would have wanted to see the money. I would have wanted to see something happen first. But then again, I'm, I'm not in that situation. So. They can always cancel. That's what I'm saying. But no matter what proof they give you. All right. Well, let's go back to Speltzer. What else to say about him? He was killed by Dexter. Okay. Well, we're not. What are you saying? No, well, he get. I know. It's, I know it's been 30 minutes, but no one cares. Um, so, Spelter gets away, he goes and taunts Deb, because she obviously touched a nerve in their interrogation, like, big time. Um, apparently he's, uh, roid raging as well. Dexter tries to, uh... He snoops his, his, his RV. He snoops it. The dude goes right back to work. After being accused of murder and arrested on suspicion of murder, eh, he, just goes back to work. He works at a cemetery. Yeah, yeah, but he's also, like, all roided up and stuff. Works at a cemetery. I don't think they have much of a... Uh, Why would you return thing? other than you had plans? And I think, like, it was obvious when he showed up to the funeral and, like, laughing at the funeral... Well, he was a prop. Probably his next thing was probably to like get Deb. That's what I thought too. But, and I think that's why you know Dexter knew that he had to kill him kind of fast, because Dexter probably thought that he was probably going to go out with Deb too. True. He would have taken a, a little bit more time to get him. And uh, so, like Dexter tries to get him in his RV. No, he didn't try to get him in RV. He went snooping, and then Spencer just walked in on him. And then, you know, Dexter's kind of a small guy compared to Speltzer. The dude actually, like, he was put into a position where if he moved his arm, he was going to break it. He didn't give a shit. He was just going to break it and knock Dexter out. He didn't care. That's how crazy this dude is. Oh, and then he tried pulling the same crap that he pulls on it. Uh, like, Speltzer pulled, tried pulling on Dexter the same thing he, that Speltzer pulls on his victims. His female victims, like, run through this maze. He almost got him, though. He, like, he cannot... That was kind of a cool scene. Like, uh... Close call. Yeah. Yeah, there was, like, a really cool scene where, like, a sculpture within his, like, uh... I guess his big, uh... helmet with, like, the horns and this axe. It's, uh... It's, like, very, uh... Kind of like a... Horrific scene. It's it's great. It could have been like, it, totally horrific, but it wasn't. It looked good, and uh, the I thing, the thing with him, he almost has kind of like a jigsaw type thing. Mm. Like, like he just can't kill you. Like uh, he has to chase you through the maze, but he made the maze. He knows the maze perfectly. Well, yeah. I think but it is like if you make it through the maze. Kind of like a game. Yeah, like if you made it through the maze. Then I think he would have let you go. Um, but still, you know, Dexter kind of flipped the tables on him. Well, yeah, uh, Dexter found a way out. Uh, he kind of broke through his maze. It's always bad when certain, someone breaks through your maze. So he breaks through his maze. He he escapes. Uh, and then, uh, he waits for, uh, Speltzer. Kind of lures him. In his, uh, you know, just like working. The lizard brain. The difference between him and Speltzer is that they both have lizard brains, but Speltzer doesn't have much of a human brain. That's what Dexter says. Yeah. So, like, Dexter finally gets him, straps him down to, to like, a, uh, what's it called? It's a gurney, Where basically. They- Put them in the fire. Uh, yeah. Ashes. Yeah. Um. Uh, and 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 at, at the at the funeral home slash graveyard that the dude works at, he didn't even use his knife set. No, cause uh. He used wood. I don't which know burns. what. Uh, Dexter's exactly playing here, but. Deb said that he had the the slides 
there were like trophies that he's no different different than Spelter. So he thinks that if he gets rid of the slides with Spelter and and not kill with his usual knives and stuff, that maybe she'll see that he's not like other serial killers like Spelter. And uh, so, so that's what Dexter did. He uh, got rid of his slides. They're all burnt to a crisp. But it was kind of cool, like the whole serial killer versus serial killer, with like the mannequins and stuff. With the yeah, there were some cool scenes. Yeah, like I think you know, light. I like almost want to see the Spelter character with his own like a uh, horror movie series. That'd be pretty good. I wanted to see more of him. I, I wanted. That's what I'm saying. He, he, he I wanted to see him like actually. A really good. I guess, I guess, you could say killer? What's that? Well, I wanted to say, he's different. Yeah. And, 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 um, because of the whole, like, cultish sort of religious aspect of it, I, I think it would have been more interesting because I made such a big deal about him being at the funeral and watching Deb. It's like, it would have been, a, I would have wanted to see what would happen in the next episode or they'd have this big, huge build up. And I think that would have been kind of cool. But now Dexter got, has got the mob following him because Dexter showed up to Alexander's crime scene. Well, they already knew what uh, Dexter looked like. They had his information, so it's not like uh, just because Dexter showed up there, they're like, okay, that's fine. No, he just he recognized him because he already had the files. He already knew who Dexter was. He was, and it's like, oh, there he is. So, yeah, so, so now he's got them following him. And can somebody please give Jennifer Carpenter a meal? I mean, I know she's been skinny throughout the series, but she's gotten skinnier. She's looking, starting to look like she's got some sort of disorder. That's all I'm saying about that, and I'll stop right there. Anyways, I, I would suspect that she's following Dexter constantly now. And I don't know how they're going to deal with the fact that Speltzer is missing and, and doesn't that seem kind of suspicious because like all these other people are working on that case to try to nail him and all of a sudden he just disappears well that's happened many times not quite the same way Deb wasn't involved in the last ones and then you know what about the slide that LaGuerta that LaGuerta found well that's well that was in the preview for our next episode that's when it really shows its face because remember, he's like, you see that smoke? It's Belzer. How does it make you feel? It feels good. Yeah. And it's like, well, is Deb, is Deb were, just playing into it? At that point. No, it was earlier when he came over to her apartment. <laughs> like me, I, I was thinking, thinking it. Was it was weird. earlier when she, he came over to her house, and I thought, I was like, oh, please don't let this be weird. Please don't let this be weird. But anyways, um, I, I, is she being genuine about turning over to Dexter's side? Or she's is so she just confused him? about no, she's she's so confused about it because like you know she she was personally dealt with this man and, you know the guy you know, killed people and he but was still. let go but there was nothing that the justice system could do. Well, because they couldn't, you know, try him for the same case. That's again. true. They would have to just wait till he killed somebody exactly. else. Exactly. But at the same time, Every though, else has to die in order. She's been adamant. I mean, like, there's there's some religions that will not let you join because they turn you away so many times, and then they finally accept you. But the thing is, though, with her, it's like she. she I don't know with Deb. I, I really don't know because it's like. Is she really going to protect Dexter now? Or is she just gathering evidence? I don't think she is. I, I don't know. I think she's more towards protecting him. Than yeah. Gathering evidence. I mean, like, the whole thing with him destroying his blood slides and it was like fire, renewal, smoke. So, see, that's protecting him. Well, yeah, like, he, but knew, she also he knew that he was going to go after wants- Dexter. Wants him to quit because since since the whole Rita thing and it, and that's just gonna follow him. There's 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 no way that he can go on killing 
and he's going to live a completely safe and happy life. There's no way. Or for the people that he cares about. I mean, like, right there. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. If I mean, obviously, Speltzer was threatening Deb, and he got rid of Harrison for a few weeks. He'd send him to his grandparents, and, you know. Well, not I don't know about Deb still. I do not know. I do not know of, of whether she's, like, genuinely in there now to support him <laughs> in this really, really screwed up way. And... I don't know. Let's see the next episode. That looks really good. Like because now really now good. there's some confrontations with Isaac Sidikoff and um, Dexter. So. Oh. And if you're looking for a new show to watch in the meantime, I want to recommend Hell on Wheels. It's, uh, first season is on Netflix. It's sort of a uh, post-Civil War drama. Uh, it's very gritty. I've noticed that, uh, I think I pointed this out to you the other night, was that uh, AMC has got, like, two shows right now that are very gritty, very dirty, as in, like, they are in dire need of deodorant and antiperspirant and soap. Mm. <laughs> but it, it's really good. It's it, it's really good. I, I, I gotta recommend it. I had one of my little marathons um, sitting down watching it. I just got hooked on it, and I can't wait for the third season. I do. And, and I just want to make a little side note about uh, Walking Dead. Um, I don't know what to think of it. I mean, it's I like they... It, so. Well, I think that the writers and the producers, they really pay attention to what everybody said because the whole season over on the farm and with Herschel and everything was just... Uh, you know, <laughs> everyone was just sort of frustrated. Um because it just didn't have that same bang as the first season did. And so now with the third season, we're just kind of uh, seeing a lot more zombies, and yet there's still drama. At least Herschel's been taken out for a few episodes. Um, interested to see what goes on with there. Um, honestly, though, I have to say Hell on Wheels is a better show than Walking Dead, but I'm going to watch Walking Dead no matter what, so... I need to catch just, up on uh, Gossip Girl. Yeah, he watches Gossip Girl. I watch, like, Breaking Bad, Walking Dead, Dexter. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Ringer looks like it's no longer around. Thank God. That was the show last year. For you. <sighs> but any who's, I guess we're going to yeah. wrap it up here. Yeah. This is the longest episode. Ever. But you know what? It, I think it's totally worth it because, like, as we're going further along, the storyline is starting to build up. It's starting to build. It's starting to build, and we're getting more excited about it. But I'm and just like kind of curious on who would want to listen to 44 minutes of people. But then again, yeah, I guess, because, like, to me... I would if I, if I was into the conversation. If I was into the conversation, I thought, hey, you know what? That's a good point. You know what? I have this idea. I want to let you all know, which makes me want to repeat... Please email us at DexterDeepCuts at gmail.com. We want to hear from you. Um, I know we've got kind of crazy schedules right now, but we're trying to post everything as soon as possible. But do not worry. Do not worry. And I I was going to say that I was going to start also posting these these uh, podcasts with the kind of a Kind of just a picture, video, you know, just just up on a YouTube, and uh, I was also going to start putting them on my own uh, personal horror channel, Nimrod Horror TV, so you can uh, watch at the, YouTube, uh, and he's also got a blogger. Yeah, which I haven't really done anything with, but yeah, the uh, website that is going to be uh, YouTube.com forward slash Nimrod Horror, and I will. And and this is probably gonna also be posted on just a Dexter Deep Cuts YouTube because it's easy. It's easier than going to Podbean. But you know what? If you're already on Podbean and you're listening, we thank yeah. you very much, and we Anyone appreciate you spending this format. much time listening to us. And if you want to say anything, please let us know. And if you want to, you know, contribute, to, you know, literally, vocally to the conversation, please let us know. We'll figure something out. 
<laughs> when you try to like have a live conversation with a guest, that would be awesome. We can't talk with them because we're sit up, but well, well, no, 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 it's possible. Well, it's possible. Yeah. We no, don't dismiss it. No, it's good. We want that. But it may sound bad. It may. Wow, you're so negative. Like, I'm not saying. I'm well, nervous, you just but. whoever was interested now just turned away and just like, well, no, never mind. No, okay. Uh, Try it anyway. If you're uh, interested in talking to the show. Um, or if you want to talk to me about other shows that are great and you like. I like good shows too. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for listening and we shall uh, do this again hopefully within a day or two because a new episode comes out on Sunday and we're recording this very, very, very late Thursday. So, um... It's already uh, Friday. It's already Friday. But uh, we will see or updated. All right. Well, um, I like to thank uh, Walgreens and uh, Big Flats, and I hope you all have a good evening.